Okay, so now we're working in Unit 2, and really kind of the main crux of what we're doing here in Unit 2 is looking at Chapter 2 in our book, which predominantly talks about how to work with Visual Studio and kind of getting you introduced to the environment. Uh, we did talk about it a little bit last week, but if you're looking to get Visual Studio for your own equipment, which is what I do recommend uh, as the best choice, Visual Studio 2015 is the version that the book is based on. And there is a Visual Studio 2017 that recently came out. If you downloaded that one, that's fine too. And, and truthfully, 2012 or 2013 will work just fine as well. Uh, to download Visual Studio, you can just type Visual Studio 2015 uh, into your browser and then end up here on this Microsoft site, the same site that we were looking at last week. So you can go ahead and download and install. In some situations, people might run in, into, I don't know, circumstances basically that wouldn't allow them to install Visual Studio on their computer. Visual Studio is a large piece of software. The download like, of, of the installation files is somewhere in the neighborhood of like 6 to 10 gigabytes, depending on the version and the plugins that you choose. And some of you will, um, as I think one of the guys in the back of the room did last week, uh, decided to download like the, the whole darn thing with every possible plugin. You don't need to do that. You'll be waiting for hours to finish. Um, what we are going to be coding is basically in, in Visual Basic. So really that's the only stuff that we need at this point. But if you are in like the web program or the software program, you might want to consider also C++ and C Sharp, which are, well C Sharp's built in but also the web development tools that would go with it if you plan to make web pages with the product. All right, Visual Studio 2015. I'm actually going to go ahead and launch it on my laptop here just so you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like uh, when it loads up. The Community Edition member is free from Microsoft. There's no reason to pay for it. And now you might launch yours and it might look a little different. I'm running mine with the light theme, so with a a white background. You can also run it with a dark theme. It doesn't mean it's a different product because it looks different. It's just the skin and you can always adjust that. All right, so that's what Visual Studio looks like. But if you don't have access to Visual Studio or a computer that's robust enough to run it, the one option that you do have is actually to get into what we call our VDI. And in the last week we kind of brushed upon it a little bit, but this week I actually want to get in there and show you guys how to use it now that you all have accounts. If you are using one of the school machines, you can actually log into the VDI and just give it a try right now. It's kind of a two-step process though. The first thing you'll want to do is go to the resources page in the course shell, and then you'll find this entry that I have for VDI and VPN. And first let me explain the two acronyms. VDI stands for Virtual Desktop Interface. It is a computing environment that runs on a server and then instead of us directly interacting with the hardware, we're just interacting with the client software that gives us an image of what's on that machine and allows us to interact with our mouse and keyboard and do stuff like we would at a regular computer. If you are on campus and you're using a VDI, you do not need step one, which is the VPN. VPN is a separate piece of software, and VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. In essence, what it does is it allows you, when you're off campus, to connect to Gateway's network and then gain access to the resources on Gateway's network that you do not have access to without that connection. VDI is one of those things. So the first step for you then would actually be to, to download VPN software and this is basically just a link, um, but there's instructions here for how to download that piece of software. It's a piece of software that comes from Cisco, and some of you networking and CSS people will recognize that name, um, that's called Cisco AnyConnect software, I believe. I'm looking for the name of it here, but they don't, there, there it is. Cisco AnyConnect VPN client. Now, I do get students asking once in a while, well, Windows has VPN built in, and I have this different VPN I use for work, and I just use that. And in certain environments, you know, the answer to that would be yes, but in Gateway's situation, the answer is no. You must use the Cisco client 
to connect to our v VPN, otherwise it will not work. Believe me, I've tried. So make sure that you download this piece of software and follow the instructions in uh, this document to get it installed. Once you've done that successfully, you would just very simply to launch that product, just go to your start menu and just type Cisco AnyConnect. This product, I, and I do want to mention because I know I have a Mac person here in class, is also available for the Macintosh. And it works identically. So uh, if you were to launch this on a Macintosh, you know, in Windows we go to the start menu, it could start typing and then the program comes up. And then right now I'm going to click to start it. On a Macintosh, you can bring the spotlight search up, which is just press your option key and the space bar at the same time. And then just type Cisco. If you have it installed, it should pop up on the screen. So once the software is running, it'll throw up this little dialog box. Typically, it'll actually put it down here in the corner. And in addition to that dialog box, it also throws this little icon down here in your system tray that looks like this. So I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Just this little circle here. And what will happen is you will connect uh, to Gateway's VPN uh, gateway server. So that address is the same one that you see up here. So in this little dialog box here, you type vpn-home.gtc.edu. And then you click Connect. Now, I'm on campus, so this is going to fail because I don't need the VPN when I'm already here. But then I would just type in the regular username and password that you use for your email account. And for you guys, I think it's ID and, and password, ID number and password. And then you'll get into the system, and you'll have that connection. Once you are connected, then you can go ahead and run the other piece of software that allows you to connect to the VDI. So two software installs here. One is for the Cisco VPN client, and the second one is for a different piece of software that's called the VMware Horizon client. Now that also has a set of instructions that you can download from Gateway. The only catch is that uh, URL that's listed here, and, and have any of you tried this yet? That URL is incorrect. Okay, And I did make this like bright yellow highlight in the posting that actually this is the correct URL right here. So the, the machine name, they changed the machine name to cirrus.gtc.edu. So wherever in this document, these instructions, uh, where you see this, that's what you're going to change it to. Now, I will say that the VMware Horizon View client, if you're looking to download that, you can actually just Google that title, honestly. And the last time I installed it, that's exactly what I did. I just Googled it, and you can see the first link that came back that's not an ad, this one's an ad, uh, is the download page for it. So you'd go to this download page, and then you look for the version for Windows. And that's the very top one. You go to Downloads, find the product, hit the download, do the install, and then you're done. All right, once you've successfully downloaded and installed the Horizon client and, you know, for your Mac or your Windows or whatever kind of machine you're using, you can then come up to uh, your Start menu or your Spotlight search once again and just type in uh, VMware, and that should pop up on your list. So the VMware Horizon client, and this is what it looks like when you launch it. Now, if you've never connected before, you're going to have to click that new server button. And then you'll just type in exactly what you see here, which is cirrus.gtc.edu. Once you have that typed in, you'll get an icon here. And the next time you come into the program, you can just double click that. And you can see that it's establishing a connection. Remember, very important, you have to be connected to the VPN if you are off campus. Otherwise, this will not work. On campus, you don't need it, and you, connect, you can connect directly to it. 
Now I have my, uh, my username here already in there, so I'm going to type in my password. If I can remember what it is. Did it again. And then I'm going to click login. And then you get to this screen. And depending on the kind of student you are, what, what kind of stuff you're signed up for here, uh, you'll see whatever uh, VDI is attached to your account or VDIs. In some cases, some people will have multiple ones. For you guys, it should really only be one, right? All right. Then you would just very simply give this one a double click. And at this point, what it's doing is it's establishing a connection to a virtual version of Windows. Now you can see mine's running full screen. And if I went to the trouble of actually hiding this little toolbar, which you can do, you can't even tell that you're on a different computer. That's kind of kind of the interesting thing about it. It is in a Windows 7 environment, which is actually a positive thing in this situation because Windows 7 takes a little bit less resources. Um, and you'll see that um, let's go through the standard process of logging in, including playing all the bad Windows 7's default sounds. And wow, it looks like like a desktop computer is running, right? All, this, all the software is there. And then if you um, take your mouse and, and just go down to the start menu here, and then you, you can also, just like in modern versions of Windows, you can type in Visual Studio. Hello? <laughs> all right, well, that's stealing my thunder. Where's my Visual Studio? Oh, no. Do you guys have a different... Very seriously, do you guys have like a different icon? Like mine said IT students. What did yours say? Yours says IT web development? Good, because I'm, I'm signed into the wrong one for some reason. Um, okay, so yours will have all the software that you need in here. If your icon said IT web development, which it should, so I got to let them know to fix my account because mine's still attached to the old one. But this works like a regular computer, folks. Um, the only catch is, whenever you're doing any work in here, don't save your work here as a permanent location because I think it persists for uh, like two hours after you log out or something of that nature and then it disappears. So the thing that you can do is you can take whatever work you're doing, you can zip your folder and then like, email to yourself, put in your Google Drive. There, there are provisions for attaching flash drives. I'm not a fan of it. Uh, but one thing I guess that's kind of new here, uh, one student informed me of, is that if you go into the, the file explorer, you'll notice that there's a home directory right here. That is a directory that is yours and yours alone that persists. So if you go in there, you can see I have a bunch of stuff already in there. And then any machine in, on the Gateway campus where you logged in with a domain account, you could get to that. Or anytime you log into the VDI, you can get to that. Now, frankly, I wouldn't be completely comfortable with storing it only there. I mean, this is the way my head works. I would also probably put it in my Google Drive just to, you know, especially if you spend hours working on a program in this environment, you don't want to lose your work. All right, folks, when you're all done with this, you can simply close the X. You know, it's kind of a crude way to shut down. Really, the more uh, elo eloquent way is to go down to the Start menu and just do a shutdown like you would a regular computer. That will shut down the virtual machine and close the session. All right, folks, that was uh, VDI and VPN in a nutshell. And this video ends here.